Shalom. Welcome back. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Let's get back into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Revelations chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 17. Revelations chapter 6. You got your Bibles? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. All right, John, the revelator, the apostle, the disciple of Jesus Christ, exiled to the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. John is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah given the testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of God, the Savior of Israel, is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. This is his testimony of what's going to happen in the end of days. We're in chapter 6 of Revelation, verse 1. And it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder for seven seals. And the angel is opening the first seal, and when he opened it, it, it was a sound like thunder. And one of the four beasts said to John, Come and see. So when he opened that first seal, it was so loud, it was like thunder. Verse 2, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right. So when he opened the first seal, this is what he saw. He saw, and behold, it was a white horse, and there was someone that sat on the horse, and whoever that was that was sitting on the horse had a bow in their hand. And that a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquering. I believe this is the Antichrist. <laughs> he's going to come forth when that first seal is open. And he's going to be given all the weapons of mass destruction at his disposal. Whatever he wants, whatever he needs. A crown is going to be given to him. He's going to rule the earth. Everything on the earth is going to bow down to him. And he, he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. If you don't submit to him, it's curtains. <laughs> it's over. He's going to rule the world. The Antichrist. That's the first seal. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And so now this is the second seal that's being opened. And when he had opened it, another of the beasts said unto John, come and see. Verse 4, and there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Okay, this is the second horse. The first horse was white. The second horse is red. Power was given unto the person sitting on this red horse to take peace out of the earth. All you ever hear about is people talking about peace, 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 this. Scripture says when people say sudden peace, when, when people talk about peace, then come a sudden destruction. And, you know, people are talking about world peace. Peace in the Middle East. <laughs> there ain't never going to be peace, complete peace, until the Lord Jesus comes back. That's what people don't understand. This world is in turmoil, and it's always going to be in turmoil. But when this red horse come on the scene, all the negotiation and talking is going to be gone. Ain't no more negotiation. People just going to be upright, outright killing one another. Power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. 
and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. We're getting to that point already, people killing one another. But it's going to be to a greater extent when this red horse come on the scene. But this is after the Antichrist. So they're going to be in cahoots, working one in tandem with one another. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and a lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. All right. Now this is the third horse. And it's black. And he said, when he had opened the third seal, I heard the, the beast say, come and see. And beheld, and lo, a black horse. So the third horse is black. The first horse is white. The second one is red. And the, and the third horse is black. And he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. Verse 6, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So it's in the scriptures. As we read, continue to read in Revelation, you're going to hear about something called the mark of the beast. Now, they may not call it that here, the, 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 de the devil and his cohorts, the Antichrist, they may not call it the mark of the beast, <laughs> but that's exactly what it is. And when that happens, you ain't going to be able to buy or sell unless you have this mark in your hand or in your forehead. And so this is what this third horse represents, the poverty that's getting ready to come up on the earth. They're going to bankrupt the whole earth. The only way you're going to eat is you worship the beast. Verse 6 again. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. See that thou hurt not the oil and wine. So when, the, when, when he opened that third seal, poverty, you ain't going to be able to live unless you worship the beast. Verse 7, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four beasts say, come and see. So now he's opening the fourth seal. And the, 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 the fourth beast said, come and see. Verse 8, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So this is the fourth horse that's coming forth and it's pale. And they that sat on the fourth horse is death and hell followed behind death. Power was given over them over the fourth part of the earth. Not the whole earth, just the fourth part of it. To kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the field. Beasts of the, of, of the earth. So we seeing some similar to this right now with this coronavirus. So all the stuff in the scriptures is coming to pass. All the prophecies are coming to pass. Everything that's written is coming to pass. That's why it's important to know what the scripture says and who the scriptures are for. The scriptures are written for, to, and about Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, God's chosen people. Jesus came to save them from their sin. It's 12 tribes. And all 12 tribes are scattered to the four earth, four corners of the earth. The first 10 tribes were scattered first. And then the second two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, were scattered during the Atlantic slave trade. And we're scattered to every other nation in the earth, Judah and Benjamin. We're everywhere. So when Jesus comes back, he's coming back 
for his chosen people that believe the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is for Israel. Salvation is for Israel. Jesus came to die for the sins of Israel. He rose on the third day. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's coming back to gather his people from the four corners of the earth. He's going to send his angels to gather us. But before all this happened, the stuff that's happening with these seals have to happen first. The fourth angel, the fourth horse is going to come with death and hell. And you're going to see plagues. You're going to see people getting killed with hunger and death and with the beasts of the earth. It's not going to be a pretty sight. You got to understand everything in the scripture is going to come to pass. The same way things was when we were in Egypt the first time and the Lord delivered us, the same thing is going to happen. The Lord is going to deliver his people a second time out of bondage. All of God's people, all the 12 tribes, we're all in the land of our captivity. We're all scattered. We were brought over here in slave ships. We didn't come over here of our, of our own free will. So we're still in the land of our captivity. We're scattered according to scripture. The scripture said that was, was what was going to happen to us. And that's what happened to us. He said, you're going to go back to Egypt again in ships. The land of bondage is Egypt. Here in America and wherever else, all of Israel is scattered. We're in the land of captivity. He said that Jesus was saying to uh, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, you're going to fall by the edge of the sword. He was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. He said, you're going to fall by the edge of the sword, and you're going to be led away captive into all nations. That's what happened to us. We was led away captive into all nations. We're in the land of our captivity, even to this day. And we're going to be here until the Lord Jesus comes back. The ruling class are the Japhet Gentiles and Edomites. They were ruling during the days of the Lord Jesus, and they're going to rule until he comes back. The rest of that verse says that Jerusalem should be trodden down of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the Japhet Gentiles, mentioned in Genesis chapter 10. They're the ruling class people on the earth, the northern European, Russia, America, and th those European nations. They are the Japhet Gentiles, the ruling class. He said Jerusalem would be trodden down by them. So the people over in the land called the nation of Israel are not God's chosen people. They are Gentiles. They are Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japhet Gentiles, and Edomites who have taken over the land by fraud and deceit. And Jesus said they're going to rule until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles will not be fulfilled until the Lord Jesus comes back. So they've stolen the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. They've stolen our identity. That's why we don't know who we are. Because <laughs> we think the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, we think they're Israel. But they are not. The scripture said they are of the synagogue of Satan. They say that they are Jews and they do lie. So God's chosen people are scattered to the four corners of the earth. And so Jesus is coming back to gather us. But again, before that happens, these seals have to be opened. And all of the destruction that goes along with these seals has to take place. And it's getting ready to happen right before your very eyes. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And so this is the war against the saints that's going to happen. Israel, God's chosen people, all 12 tribes of Israel are the saints. Israel is the body of Christ. Israel is the church. All of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom are the saints. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. 
And during this time of tribulations and trouble, a lot of uh, killing is going on. And it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held. The people that are getting killed for the gospel are Israelites. Now, people talk about Christianity. Jesus didn't come to start any religion. He didn't come to start Judaism, Christianity, Islam, any religion. He didn't come to start that. That's Those are man-made things. Jesus only come to save his people from their sins. So he's not coming back for Judaism or Islam or Christian. He's coming back for Israel that believed the gospel of the kingdom. He called us disciples. Now, the disciples was called Christians, but they didn't call themselves Christians. Other people called them Christian. The disciples did not preach Christianity. They preached the kingdom of heaven. They were disciples. That's who we are. That's who they were. They were disciples. And if we're following Christ, we're disciples. Jesus didn't come to start a religion called Christianity. He's not coming back for Christian. The people that are grafted in, and were grafted in and are grafted in are Hebrew Israelites of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. When they sinned against the Lord, they were no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim. They were referred to as Gentiles. And so when the Lord called the Apostle Paul to go preach to the Gentiles, it was the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that was scattered. Those are the people that he went to preach to who are grafted in. People want to say, the Gentiles is grafted in, but you got to know who the Gentiles are, and you got to know who Israel are. The, Genti the Gentiles that are grafted in are the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. That's who they are. And so people don't understand the scriptures, and that's the blame of these 501c3 corporations, the Antichrist church system. All of that is going to come to a head because you're going to know that all these so-called churches, these 501c3 corporations, they're the Antichrist church system, starting with Rome, all of them. And so they're not preaching the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> they're preaching the Antichrist church system. That's what they're preaching. So he's opening up the fifth seal. And under the altar are the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held. They believed the gospel of the kingdom. They're Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. All twelve tribes. Verse 10, And when they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So Hebrew Israelites are being killed for the word of God and for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're under the altar and we're crying to the Lord, How long? How much longer, Lord? <laughs> Are you not going to avenge our blood? Verse 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Jesus has already warned us that they're going to kill some of us <laughs> for the kingdom, for the gospel of the kingdom, for the word of our testimony. So that should not come as a shock to us. We should be re ready, willing, and able to give our life for the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And this is what's going to happen. He said, white robes will be given to them was given to them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little while unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that they should be killed as they were should be fulfilled that's going to be fulfilled when this fifth seal is open the devil is going to make war with the saints hebrew israelites of the seed of abraham the devil is going to make war with us and kill us Because we're going to refuse to take this mark of the beast. That's why it's important to know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, you take this mark. And if you're an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, you destroy all the chances 
of you ever being saved. You won't be saved if you take this mark of the beast. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's why it's important to know who you are, that you're a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham. But at the same time, if you believe the gospel of the kingdom, you got to be willing to lay down your life for the word of God. So this is going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Verse 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. All right. This is the sixth seal that's being opened. The first seal was a white horse. The second seal was a red horse. The third seal was a black horse. The fourth seal was a pale horse. The fifth seal was the... the uh, Let's see, what the fifth seal said. The fifth seal was the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, us. The Hebrew Israelites, we're being killed because we're not taking the mark of the beast. So now he's opened the sixth seal. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And so when he opened the sixth seal, you're going to get this great earthquake. We've had some earthquakes, but we ain't had one like this. <laughs> so when this earthquake comes, it's going to be the end. He said the sun is going to become black as sackcloth of hair. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to see anything because there ain't going to be no more sunlight. And the moon is going to become red like blood. Verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely fig when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So this is all going to happen as soon as that sixth seal is open. You're going to get an earthquake. You're going to get the sun turning black, the moon turning to blood. The stars of heaven is going to fall to the earth, even as a fig cast her untimely fig when she is shaken by a mighty wind, these stars are going to be what they call asteroids, plummeting to the earth. Verse 14, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. So this is continuing with the sixth seal. When we look it up at the sky and we see a blue sky, you ain't going to see that no more. It's going to be rolled away like a scroll. And every mountain and island is going to move out of their place. <clears throat> this is the end. This is what's getting ready to happen when the Lord Jesus comes back. And it's going to happen. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. The earth, the world, the people in the world, the earth, they know what's getting ready to happen. They done built themselves these bunkers to try to hide from the day the Lord is coming back. It says all, all these kings, every, all these rich people, the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bond man, every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. This was prophesied long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> and these people that done read this and they know what's getting ready to happen. They know they ain't coming back with the Lord. They ain't going with the Lord. So they're trying to hide from the Lord <laughs> as if they can hide. They can't hide, though. You already know what they're going to do before they do it. But they done built all these bunkers. That's all these presidents and governments. All these people that you put your trust in. You put your trust in these men. Your presidents and all these governors and senators and, and lawyers and judges. All these rich billionaires. This is who you put your trust in. They ain't thinking about you doing this time. They thinking about themselves. They done built themselves uh, bunkers to go hide in. <laughs> 
and hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. When all this stuff started to happen, oh, they oh, time to go to the bunkers, <laughs> time to go hide. Verse 16, and said unto the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So this is what the people are going to be saying when they see the heavens roll away like a scroll. Hide us, saying to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Because when the sky split open and roll away like a, a, a scroll, they're going to see Jesus sitting on the throne of heaven. And he's got, coming back. They know what's getting ready to happen. So they're trying to hide and think that they can, you know, protect themselves. They, they can't protect themselves from the Lord, from the wrath that's getting ready to come upon the earth, no matter what they think or say. Verse 17, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And so they know what's getting ready to come, the world. The people that are not Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. And even the people that are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham know what's getting ready to come, but they don't believe the gospel of the kingdom. They're repro reprobates. Their heart is hardened, and they don't want to believe the gospel of the kingdom. You better believe the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.